Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today I'm thrilled to be talking about the wonderful documentary, The Space Race. We are joined today by directors Lisa Cortez and Diego Hurtado de Mendoza, along with space pioneer Ed Dwight and astronaut and executive producer Leland Melvin. And Lisa and Diego, starting with you, I mean, it's it's so impressive when you step back and realize the decades worth of, of history that you've managed to tell within this one singular film. And so I was just really interested in the process and kind of like how you approached creating the initial outline of the story that you wanted to tell over this span of time and the way that as documentary filmmaking does, it just continued to evolve and grow from that initial idea and concept. So <laughs> for us really, um, you know, this wonderful story, the way we approached it uh, from the very beginning was the idea that it should be told through its participants. If you look at the film, there's no historians, there's no experts. It's really the protagonist of the story telling their own story. And that was really important to us that they had agency um, in telling their own stories. And, you know, we're dealing with some of the brightest, most incredible people, the best of us. And which is, you know, a role we understood very early on was to really earn their trust. And, you know, we, we were really lucky to have Leland Melvin as an executive producer. He's a former NASA astronaut. And he really helped us connect with that tightly knit community. It's a small group of individuals that have had that experience. And, you know, he helped us, you know, get inside and get to know them and for them to feel comfortable with our vision and understand what we're trying to do, which is let them tell their own story. So that was really our main um, initial approach. And then we were really blessed by the generosity of Ed Dwight when we went to spend time with him. And he just shared so much and had the best stories and has had the most incredible journey. So that Ed becomes the spine of our film is, is a really natural way for us to tell this expansive story. I really, really love that. And and Ed, for you, what was the experience of of making this film with Lisa and Diego and and just revisiting so many pivotal moments in your own personal history, you know, looking back at some of the archival material and just sitting down and sh resharing these stories with them? Well, you know, I had so many people that had come to me before uh, uh, with wanting to do podcasts and, and, and they and, – they do little chopped up things and and go away and and, and then it would appear someplace. But but for the first time, uh, uh, I, I was uh, my my confidence was low uh, because of my past experience. But then I find out when I was dealing with a bunch of professionals, uh, they knew what the hell they were doing. <laughs> But I still had a little bit of mistrust to the extent that we were we we filmed for so long, and and that you know, that kind of you know had my antenna going up, you know. But I I, th I thought I was going to get about five minutes in in uh, of airtime uh, on the movie. Honestly, that's what I thought, uh, and I thought that that would be references to, to my involvement. Uh, but I never ever thought in a thousand million years that they would take this story uh, and really make it into a, uh, 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 one of the most phenomenal, uh, fantastic, uh, educational uh, films uh, that I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, I'm not over-exaggerating. Uh, it, it was, uh, but, but the people, it was the people. I mean, Diego and Lisa, I mean, it was just, oh man, uh, it, it, it's like putting your hands uh, you put your life in the, in the doctor's hands and say, okay, doctor, heal me, <laughs> fix me. <laughs> uh, and, and, and these guys were, 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 they were gentle and there was nothing hard. There was no, no dissension, no disagreement uh, and everything flowed. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what made this thing uh, just phenomenal. The whole experience phenomenal. But again, until I saw it and I saw this little, dude walking around the screen in front of me. I was like, what the hell have they done? Uh, and to allow me all that space and all that time and all that credit, uh, it was just absolutely phenomenal uh, to me. And it just, uh, I, I still relive, uh, uh, you know, when you laid your head down to go to sleep, you, you know, you relive scenes from it because it wasn't a... Uh, the beauty of it all was it put my life in context 
it was the, you said that date thing going on. They put it in context, and that was the key to this whole thing. What was happening in the world? What? How did this thing fit? What was going on in the world in music and black power movement? All these different movements were all included in this, and nobody would have thought that they would add all that because it could have been dry. You know, when he did this and he did that, and he did this and then he did that. No, 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 no. That's not what this is about. This is a contextual uh, 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 presentation, if you will, of what happened. And they integrated everything that was happening to me and all the other astronaut guys in a, in a, in a time uh, period. It was just overwhelming. And to anybody that sees this, I mean, I, I've, Leland talks about how he was looking at my face as I watched it, but uh, but the people that have seen it and the reaction to this movie is just totally phenomenal. This is all I can say. I, I love that. And I think it works so beautifully, you know, in the way that, as Lisa said, that it's, you know, you're the spine of the film and, and all of these stories keep connecting back. And, you know, which brings me over to you, Leland. And I was just interested in kind of when you first became aware of, of Ed's history with NASA and just kind of realizing that this this history goes back, you know, 20 years prior to when a lot of people even realized and how we could have had an African-American in space on the moon, you know, all of those things 20 years before we ended up having that and the impact that that had on you on your career. Well, you know, it's, I didn't know about it at the beginning. And then I I started finding out more about Ed. And actually, Ed came to my retirement party after 24 years at NASA. And he was one of the last people to speak. But before he said anything about me, he had to tell people why he was even on the stage, why he was at the podium, because no one knew his story. And that was probably one of the saddest things. But one of the most beautiful things was after he told them who he was, then they were like, wow, here's another hidden figure. Here's another person that hasn't been story been told. And I think that's the beauty of this film is that Ed's story is going to be told to so many people and not just his story, but the legacy and the foundation, the bricks that he put in the ground to build this Afronaut legacy. And, you know, and that's, that's the power of what Lee San Diego envisioned and just letting people tell their stories. And it just melded together in this way. And, you know, Ed talked about context. We were in Houston recently uh, watching, doing a screener, and Ron McNair's uh, wife and uh, daughter were there in the screening. And his daughter came up to me after watching this and said, I never knew the context of my dad's involvement in NASA because she was two years old when he, he died on Challenger. And so she had this big smile on her face and she was like, it makes sense now. It makes perfect sense now. And I think that's what people will see with the timeline, 63, 64, 79, you know, that timeline helps people figure out where they were and what was happening in the space program to identify these these faces and, and people that have never been seen and been hidden. That's it's so beautiful. And I, I love the phrase of describing Diego and Lisa as just letting people tell their stories, you know, which which brings me back to the two of you and just with that essence of the importance of your interview subjects really being the storytellers of this film. How do you go about setting the right space and the right environment in the way that you're filming them, the way that you're sitting down, the way that you're asking questions to make sure that you're really just kind of giving them these little inklings and breadcrumbs where they can take the idea and just tell you whatever it is that they want to tell you around that subject. I think for us as filmmakers, it's, it's a process. And, you know, Lisa and I just feel so comfortable working with each other. Um, and all we wanted to do is make a film out of love and respect and recognize this incredible contribution. So, you know, when you, when we've been at the screenings, uh, multiple screenings we've had of the film, one thing that continues to amaze me is that when you have the astronauts, the luxury of having some of the participants in, in, in the film and during the Q and A's, they're always talking about love. So you're dealing with scientists, uh, jet fighter pilots, people that have accomplished so much in their careers. And yet they're so compassionate. They're so loving. And that's what you take from them. And so that's the same environment that Lisa and I wanted to create when we were on set with them. It's that's what we're after. We're not trying to, create 
some kind of strange narrative. We just want to listen to them. And sometimes that sounds crazy, but that's, you know, their stories have many times been told and it felt to us around them rather than through them. So that was really our goal is just to create a space where they could feel comfortable with us and, and share their experiences. And what we always knew is that we are here to bear witness, not to direct, but to bear witness to these incredible individuals who we have the honor of talking to when they are still with us. And mm. who were so generous with their time. And so it is important for us as filmmakers to also be audience members and to be along for the journey of revelation and learning. And you can't do that if you are interjecting or coming with a narrative that is not true to your participants. Okay. And and one other thing to add to Lisa and the power of Miss Lisa Cortez was that Guy Bluford has never been so expressive and emotive in oh, anything. Right. And <laughs> she was able to, I don't know what you did up there in Ohio, Lisa, but that was the most beautiful display of his excited, being excited about what he did. Because he's, he's, a, he's a strong introvert. And he was just, ooh, bang, bang, boom, you know, all of these little noises and things he was saying, which he's never done before, never heard before. So Lisa, you were you were magical at extracting out the most uh, intimate pieces of Guy Bluford. Thank you. Thank you, Leland. That's so amazing. <laughs> and and for you as well, Leland, you know, in, in terms of just really connecting this community of astronauts and people who've been through the space program at NASA as part of this film as an executive producer on it. How pivotal was that moment where Victor Glover was in space and kind of there was that first time, which we see in the movie of just all these astronauts coming together on a, on a video chat for the first time. How important was that and pivotal in terms of making this film just because it really cemented this sense of community and, and connected a lot of you much closer than you had been previously? Yeah, uh, Mara, that was really critical, especially when you think about the time in our country with uh, Derek Chauvin's trial coming to a head. And if he had been exonerated, you know, the the potential for riots across the country and Victor's, you know, not able to take care of his family, his four daughters and a wife in Houston, Texas. And so we were there for him, asking him those questions. What can we do for you? What do you need from us? And I think that part of it, it just shored him up and gave him the sense that his family's protected, his family's taken care of. And I, and I think after this uh, this moment, we now, we have, a, we have an Afronaut email distribution list and we send notes and things. Jeanette Epps is flying in space in February and uh, she's um, you know, African American female will be on the space station for six months. So we've all reached out to her through this network and, you know, what do you need? How can we help, you know? What are the things you need? So I think this has been very beneficial to the future of the Afronauts. Yeah. And and Ed, you know, I, I love that there's such a clear sense of mentorship that you provide to astronauts. I love the scene in the movie where we get to see you on a video chat um, connecting to Jessica Watkins, for example. When you're talking to people who are going through the space program in the present day, what are the things that you really want to share with them or that feel important to instill upon them from your time? Well, you know, the good news is that they have all uh, uh, taken the time uh, to uh, reach out and acknowledge to me uh, their their feelings about me uh, and what I did, and I and I'm really honored with that because they don't need to do that because it's it's their time and their day, uh, and, and not my time. Uh, for the things that they're accomplishing now, but uh, I, uh, I I rely on uh, 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 Victor is because uh, I take a lot of credit for. It. I met Victor when he's 15 years old, by the way, uh, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, and became a uh, uh, a kind of mentor to him. And if you ask him. Uh, who, who the main guy was that talked to him through things that got him into this and out of that. He, he immediately triggered off, uh, triggered to head right. And, uh, uh, 
you know, and, and and you don't realize the power you're wielding uh, 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 when you're sitting down and advising and mentoring people uh, or what they're going to do with what you're telling them. Yeah. And, and and I could not tell them about an orbital experience or the weight of the thing that I did up there. I, I didn't have that kind of information to give them. But 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 I did share the information about persistence and staying with it uh, and honoring them. And I think they got something out of my cheering them on. Uh, and you know, I think that was the most one of the most important things because that I could have been a total ass in this whole thing and tell you all you guys go to the devil because I didn't go up there and I'm jealous and I'm mad and I'm angry and I'm right. carrying a chip on my shoulder. Uh, and that, that didn't happen. And so it invigorated all of the uh, of the new astronauts coming along uh, uh, to say, hey, dude, thank you. And they've all done it. And some of them kind of, it was kind of blurry about what they're thanking me for. <laughs> what did you, what, what, you know, what, but, but they, it all comes down to this guy was there by himself doing this whole experience. And at least we had companions that we could talk to and, mm-hmm. and share the, uh, our insecurities with and get us reassurances from it. But this guy was there all by himself for, for quite a time and he had to fight this battle. And, 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 they, and they immediately transferred to themselves. Could I have fought that battle? Uh, all by myself for all those years, because it it took twenty years from the time I was it was was in the astronaut program till uh, until the second group was was selected. That was a, it's quite a long period of time for things to happen. Yeah, I I love that, and you know, Lisa and Diego. One of the things that I I love that you do in the film as well is you look at the way that art has the ability to create change. You know, we have the the story point that we see with Michelle Nichols and the work that she did even off screen and really campaigning for inclusion within the space program. Um, you know, we see conversation around Afrofuturism and, you know, even just the art that Ed creates as well now. Um, and I was interested in how that makes you think about your own work as filmmakers when you're making a documentary, which is telling the story of, you know, in essence, real life change that can happen from people seeing themselves represented through art, how that makes you think about the own art that you're creating at the same time. Lisa, you want to take it off? Oh, Mara, you have these great <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one of the things that's incredible about the space race are our partners. National Geographic and the Kennedy Marshall Company, who supported Diego and I in a very big vision, not only in the telling of the story in elegant and elevated way, obviously the platforms that the film will be seen on worldwide, National Geographic, Disney Plus, Hulu, but also with a screening series at schools and universities across the country with a curriculum. So the film will have a very long life. It's an evergreen story. And it is a part of the legacy of what we leave behind as storytellers. And that we were able to leverage all of these incredible collaborations. And of course, our partnership with Leland Melvin Um, to realize this and to have a film that people can interact with on so many ways and fuel conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, Those are the things that are the joy of, of this project and of the art of making these types of films. And, you know, in, in talking about art, many people told us that, you know, when people talk about STEM, it should actually be to- called STEAM, and that includes arts. And I think no one better than Ed Dwight to uh, embody that. It's someone whose experience could have been filled with pain, and he transformed all of that through art into an incredible, you know, storytelling um, career where he's retelling a story you know, the stories that we didn't, it's exactly what we're doing. It's telling those stories that people didn't know about. And I love how Ed, uh, at one point you told us how if aliens, right, how you got into sculpture and you thought 
if aliens came down to earth and looked around, they wouldn't find monuments and they wouldn't know that, you know, of the contributions of many people that are not part of the history. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I think of the example of Ed and how he's done this incredible uh, work that uh, the pe people will see in the film as well. Absolutely. And, you know, Leland, in, in talking before about the idea of the legacy that became before you, you're now in essence creating that legacy for other people, um, you know, and with the fact that it was reading that it was essentially a, a recruiter that said to you initially, you know, I think you could be an astronaut and, and this is something that you should consider. How do you think about the responsibility and the way in which you try to instill that idea of possibility on the the next generations of, of African-American astronauts? Yeah, we all have that responsibility to be, to be those mentors and role models. And I remember uh, Charles Barkley said he's not a role model. Well, we're all role models. We're just good ones or bad ones. And I'll never forget the time when um, I signed a, an autographed picture for a kid at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And fast forward to a commencement speech that I'm giving. And this young man walks up to me and says, hey, do you remember me? I'm like, no, give me a little more information. He said, well, when I was in ninth grade, you signed this picture for me and you told me I could do anything I believe in, I, anything I put my mind to. And he had just graduated with his PhD Mara in aerospace engineering because I told him that. And so we all have this platform and ability to help people see themselves in those positions and rise. And again, it all started with Ed setting the foundation for this and this incredible story, you know, going through culture, history you know, music, just everything to end up, you know, where we did with, with the space race. Yeah. And, and Ed, I wanted to ask about your artwork as well, because I, I love what you say in the film about using art as a way to educate and that all of your pieces are about educating other people. And I was just really interested in when you're creating a new piece, how you approach coming up with the creative idea of what it is that you want to build. And then also thinking about the educational component and the story that you want it to tell. Well, you know, uh, this that's really interesting because, uh, no, I, I, I was saying that I, I had a white education uh, and, I, I, and I didn't know anything about black history. I went through this whole space program, I, uh, a phase of my life, not having any understanding. I didn't even know there was slavery. I, I swear to God, I went to white schools all the way through. And, and, and this whole idea of discovery uh, on my part, after I got out of the military and was school, some people got a hold of me and told me about all this stuff that I didn't know anything about. Uh, I, 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 and then all of a sudden, this opportunity arose that, uh, th that I was told the story that Black people have been on the continent for 300 plus years, and there's nothing in the public square that says anything about <clears throat> any accomplishments of black uh, Americans, Afro-Americans. Uh, and I, my first impulse was, was who, who really, who cares? I mean, that sounds really cold, but but that's where my mindset was. And a uh, uh, first black Lieutenant Governor George Brown, uh, you know, sat me down and told me a bunch of stories uh, uh, about black involvement in the, in the country and black progress in the country and that everybody needs to know about this. So it was an easy task for me that was laid out in front of me uh, that, you know, this story needs to be told. And he gave me a huge project from the state of Colorado. Uh, and uh, the theme of it was why black slaves came to Colorado. And once that, that opened that door and it, it was just, I was just flooded. My brain went crazy, but I, there's got to be hundreds, uh, hundreds more stories, and that's that, that lit the fire. And then I went after it, and I just the only thing I wish I wish I had fifty more years on Earth so I could do the rest of them that I have on the board. <laughs> but 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 getting to this art thing, uh, I, I, just something that popped into my brain. Uh, they call uh, Star Star Trek. Uh, you know, that was an art form, uh, uh, and, and it was a fantasy art form of, uh, and people took that for granted, uh, that here you got this black woman sitting there, and it was total fantasy. Uh, and here you got a movie that is not total fantasy, it's total truth, uh, and, and but, but it's an art form. So we start with art form, and we're ending here 
with with an art form with with a, with a group of incredible ar artists. Whether you movie makers want to classify yourselves as artists or not, but uh, you are artists in my in my sense of the word because this this movie is the highest art form that I've witnessed in my ninety years of life here. So. So th th this this whole thing is is all coming together right now, and there's art and science and all wrapped up in one very very large package uh, here totally. that we can take that we can take to the public. I totally agree, and and I mean Lisa and, and Diego. I mean it's it's so wonderful that point that you're making and what we see in the film with Ed's story, where you know I think the film does this as well. It acknowledges difficulties and hardships, and yet at the end of the day, it has this real sense of optimism and hopefulness and and what is still to come in the future, um, which really mirrors Ed's personal story as well. And was that idea of just having this encapsulation of hopefulness for the future something that was important to you when you set out to make the film or was it something that you discovered in telling the story along the way well it was really not a goal of ours our goal was really to listen to our participants and, and and learn from them i mean we're dealing with bright minds that have done incredible things it was just a matter of listening to them and they would tell us whether it was a hopeful story or not. And so if, you know, if that's what come across is because they're so incredible that after accomplishing everything they've accomplished and gone through the trials and tribulations to get there, that's their message. That's the wonderful thing about, you know, the astronauts of our film. They're sharing that love, that idea of, you know, dreaming big and possibilities and, and inspiring the next generation. I really, really love that. Well, it has been so incredible hearing all of you talk about making this film and just the journey of all your individual experiences. It's it's such a wonderful documentary and I feel like it has the ability to make such an impact in the way that great art does. So congratulations on the movie, your collaborations with each other and thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, Mara. You.